Welcome back to our study on polar functions. Today we're going to be converting between polar and rectangular equations. So we've already been doing this, but we've just been doing it with points. So we looked at formulas that we could use if we wanted to go from rectangular points to polar points or from polar points to rectangular points. And just a reminder that this is all based on right triangle trigonometry. So we're using the Pythagorean theorem. We're using SOHCAHTOA. And those formulas that we ended up with were that x would be equal to the radius times the cosine of the angle, y would be equal to the radius times the sine of the angle. And then to find r, we could use Pythagorean theorem. Also, just a reminder that if I just want to know what r is, I would take the square root of the quantity x squared plus y squared, okay? So moving forward into this unit, you're going to have to rely heavily on your trig foundation and your algebra foundation. So if you're struggling with this, you're, you're going to want to do a lot of practice and you're going to want to practice your algebra skills. Make sure if you are struggling with this that you communicate to your teacher about your needs. So let's do some practice. We're going to start off pretty basic, going from rectangular to polar form. That means going from x and y variables to an r and a theta variable. So if I look here, I see that I have y equals 4. So what I need to do is I need to rewrite y in terms of polars. Well, we just had a formula for that. Y is equivalent to r times the sine of theta. So I get r times the sine of theta equals 4. Our standard practice is going to be isolating that r variable. So I can do that by dividing away the entire sine of theta function. What I do to one side, I must do to the other. And I get r equals 4 over the sine of theta. I have just gone from something that is in rectangular form, now in polar form, final answer. And if I go to Desmos real quick, these links are provided for you on your, on your formula or on your worksheet that you've been given. I have y, y equals 4. Sorry, I've got too much opened up here y equals 4 is the exact same as r equals 4 over the sine of theta. So when I have y equals 4 and then I click on 4 over the sine of theta, Notice how it's written here. Obviously, the reciprocal of 1 over sine is cosecant, and I can go back and make those adjustments. But I get the same line. I'm not seeing a difference between if I unclick this function, the polar function, I see that line, y equals 4, a horizontal line. When I click this, I still see that same line, just in a different color. Same function, different representation. So just to reiterate what we saw on that last on the on Desmos, this sine of theta right here could be written as r equals 4 times cosecant of theta, just using my trig identities. That's the reciprocal of sine. Okay, so now let's step it up a notch and let's look at what happens when we have multiple variables and we get squares. Taking a look at this next problem, I see a lot more going on and you need to be observant about what's happening in the math problem. Because when I look at this problem, I notice I have a quadratic x, a quadratic y, and a linear x term. So I'm gonna do some regrouping just based on the formulas we saw on the previous screen. I know that x squared plus y squared is equivalent to r squared in polar form. So if I regroup those together, if I'm strategic in my thinking, then I'll be able to say that x squared plus y squared is r squared. Let me rewrite that so it looks more like an r. Okay. So this becomes r squared. And then I have this minus 6 that's going to have to stay the same. And then this x value here. Well, again, I know x is r times the cosine 
of theta all equal to zero. Now the really important thing here is that I solve for r, just like I did in the first problem over there. So I notice that this is an r squared, but this has an r in it also. So what I can do is actually divide everything by r, including zero, over on the right side, because what I do to one term, I have to do to the other to keep everything balanced. And I end up, when I divide through by r, I get r minus six, this just becomes cosine of theta, still all equal to zero. Trying to isolate the r variable, I can add the six cosine of theta to the other side. To undo subtracting, I use addition, and I get r equals six cosine of theta. And you can go to Desmos to, to check out the validity of that and make sure they match. Okay. You should know enough about graphing polars to know that this is going to be a circle along the x-axis and that that circle will have a radius of 3 because the longest this is going to get from the, the center, from the pole, is going to be a length of 6. Um, if you're not sure exactly what I'm talking about, go back and watch the previous videos. All right, now we're going to convert the other way. We're going to start with polars and move to rectangular form. So here I have an r equals 4. Now I have options. I can just go ahead and take this r and I can convert it to x, the square root of x squared plus y squared equals 4. But I don't want to leave that square root. So how do I undo a square root? By squaring both sides. So I end up with x squared plus y squared equals 16. Remember what this is going to tell us. This is the equation of a circle centered at 0, 0 with a radius of 4. Okay, let's look at 7 now and notice that I have r, so I could go ahead and change that just like I did over here, just like I did in number 6 to the left. But the issue is I have just a sine of theta. Sine of theta, I don't have any conversion for. The only thing I can convert is r times sine of theta, which I know is y. So what I need on this side is an r. Well, okay, so let's put an r there. Let's multiply by r. I have 3 times r sine theta. But you just can't go around multiplying one side of an equation by something and not the other. So I'm also going to multiply the left side by r, and I get r squared. Well, that's convenient because we know r squared is equivalent to x squared plus y squared equals 3 times y. r sine theta is y. I can get this in uh, general form of the polar by subtract or by the rectangular by subtracting over the 3y. And that's my final answer. All right. One last problem we're going to go over is something like this, okay, where it gets, it gets a lot more challenging to make these conversions. So it's not necessarily intuitive to, for this first step, but I notice that my denominator, I don't want to work with the denominator. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cross multiply. I really don't want to have to deal with that denominator. I don't want to start using reciprocal identities. So I'm just going to clear my fraction by cross multiplying and I get r times one minus cosine of theta equals one. And now I can even say, oh, if I distribute this r, I get r minus r cosine of theta equals one. Well, this is great because r cosine of theta, I know is just x. Now, this is where I'm like, oh, but this r value, that's a square root. That's really frustrating. Now I have x squared plus y squared, but it's all under that square root. Well, what do we do to get rid of square roots? Well, we're going to square, but I'm not going to square yet. Because I have a strong foundation in algebra, I know that I'm going to want to move this minus x before I start squaring both sides because that's going to get really icky. So if I add x to each side, I get the square root of x squared plus y squared equals 1 
plus x. Now I'm going to go through and square both sides. The left side's pretty easy, okay? Square, square root, you just end up with x squared plus y squared. The right side, though, here we go. Who's, who's up on there? Their algebra, I have to square this binomial. This is going to be 1 plus x times itself. I must distribute. I get 1 plus 1x one plus 1x plus x squared. This is 1 plus 2x plus x squared, all equal to x squared plus y squared. To finish, I am going to move everything to the other side, and I subtract the x squared, subtract the x squared. So watch what's about to happen. When I subtract the x squared from both sides, the x squareds actually cancel. I'm going to subtract the 2x, I'm going to subtract the 1, and my final answer is y squared minus 2x minus 1, all equal to 0. So that's converting polars and rectangular equations. Just some solving techniques you're going to want to keep in mind as you practice. What can you do if you need an r value, like when we just saw that cosine of theta? Well, you can multiply through by an r. But just what you do to one side, you have to do to the other. And then what can we do to undo a square root? Well, you can square. But make sure you square properly. If you are squaring an entire side, you have to square and distribute those binomials. So rely heavily on your algebra skills and ask lots of questions.